Alveolar osteitis, or dry socket, is a severe pain that occurs in patients after the extraction of a tooth. Now, it's going to happen to you eventually if you're taking teeth out, so you need to know how to manage it. And in this video, I'm going to show you my protocol for managing a dry socket in my office. We're also going to look at the causes of dry socket, the diagnosis of a dry socket, and the course of treatment. So basically how long this lasts and basically when it's going to resolve. So first off, how do we diagnose a dry socket? Well, a dry socket is usually diagnosed when a patient presents to you and they tell you they are having severe pain. You've just taken a tooth out maybe three or four days ago. That's the typical onset of the symptoms. And they might even say to you, you know what, doc? You took that tooth out and everything was great. Came out nice. I went home. Things felt good. And I woke up this morning, though, and man, is it sore. And it's now, like I said, three or four days later. So they're taking Advil. They're taking Tylenol. Nothing is touching the pain. They have a pulsatile throbbing pain that is often radiating over to the ear or up to the eye, depending where that socket is, and they may have a foul taste or a foul odor that is emanating from that socket. When you look down in there and you see where that tooth was, you're going to see an empty socket, a dry socket, and it is going to be yellowish-gray tissue, just necrotic tissue and food debris that's in there. It does not look healthy, and around the edges of there, you're going to see some red, inflamed, angry tissue. It's not unusual for the lymph nodes to be a little bit swollen under the jaw or down the neck of the affected side, but the patient won't be presenting with any fever or any signs of infection. Finally, when you irrigate these things, typically they can be a little bit touchy, so make sure that you let the patient know that's a possibility beforehand. And if you do irrigate it and it gets to be a little bit sensitive, then that is again some confirmation that what you're dealing with was in fact a dry socket. So how do I deal with this in my office? Well, the first thing I do is have a discussion with this patient about whether or not this is infection, because usually that is their main concern. So the first thing I do is allay their fears that this is indeed not an infection, but a very common thing called dry socket. It presents three to four days later. It's the throbbing pain. We go through all the symptoms and I tell them what we're going to do to treat them and when it's going to get better. So the treatment that we do for them is we will irrigate the site. So basically, let's say that we took out a lower second molar, and this is where the pain is now coming from. So we're going to take our Monoject syringe, and in it we have prepared a 3% peroxide solution at about 20 to 25% of the mixture and 0.12% chlorhexidine in the remaining 75%. We are going to irrigate and flush down in that socket with this solution and what's going to happen is that peroxide is going to contact the tissues and it's going to bubble up oxygenating the area and lifting out any debris from in that socket. Now before we continue I have to say it's a 3% peroxide and peroxide itself is not great for osteoblasts. So understand that osteoblast proliferation is inhibited by peroxide. So you do not want to be using pure peroxide in there. And in fact, it's not even ideal to be using very much of it at all. So we want to be diluting it with our chlorhexidine, which we're doing, but we still want to get that bubbling property and the oxygenation from there to try to clear that out and clean things up a little bit, which is why we still use it. Now, if you're not comfortable with that and you'd rather just use a sterile saline, that's just fine. You may not get all that debris out quite as easily, but it's a suitable alternative if you're more comfortable using it. Now, the next thing that we'll do is we'll suction back there a bit to kind of dry it up a bit. And then I'm going to use this alveogil. Now, alveogil is a nice dressing material, maybe not available to everyone, but it's something that will last for maybe one to two days, giving that patient almost complete pain relief. And it works literally within minutes. We're going to talk about it in another video. When we take that out and we place it into that site, what we're then going to do is we're going to use this instrument here called a gauze packer. So this is a nice tool that you can use. It has these little teeth on the end. And whether you're using alveogil or you're using, say, gel foam with a paste or some other dressing, it is a nice way to basically get that packed slightly down into the socket. Now, it'll be a little bit tender down in there for the patient. And you don't want to be packing it in with force. You just want to make sure that it's in there enough that it's not going to come out. Once I get the alveogil in there for the patient, I usually will take a gauze and what I will do is I will just fold it up and place it over that area and they will close gently on this just to soak up some of the taste coming out of there that may be leaking out in the fluid from that alveogil. 
How long is this going to last? So the pain that the patient's having may last them anywhere from about four to eight days. So the total time for that socket to granulate, which basically means instead of forming from that blood clot, it has to grow over the edges and down into the socket. It is gonna take around seven to 10 days. So it's possible your patient may have pain for eight days. Will it be the severity that it was at day three or four? Absolutely not. It's gonna be improving each time. So if you are choosing to put something in that socket, understand that and explain this to your patient that it is a foreign body. So when you put something in that socket, you are maybe making it feel better, but you're causing a protracted period of healing. So when you tell your patient that, I find that it will have them come back less frequently to have it repacked because usually down the road, once you've done it once or twice, they can deal with a little bit of pain that's left and manage it with ibuprofen versus coming to see me. This is always a self-limiting condition. So even if we left it alone and we did absolutely nothing, you could explain that to your patient as a treatment option. It will get better on its own in that time frame that we mentioned. Now, why do dry sockets happen? Well, a dry socket is caused basically by a loss of the blood clot. So the blood clot comes out or it either dissolves or breaks down in those first few days. Now, some causes of this could be estrogen that causes fibrinolytic activity. So if you have someone on a oral contraceptive, so young teenage girls or you know, middle-aged girls, uh, adults, uh, are going to be taking this medication, that may be causing these clots not to form properly or to break down. Smoking is something that's been implicated, but it's usually if you're doing maybe half a pack a day or more. So half a pack a day increases your risk almost fourfold for a dry socket, according to what it says in the literature. Some of the theories behind smoking in general causing dry socket are maybe weak, but they think that the nicotine could be vasoconstricting some of the vessels around the area, causing it to heal poorly and causing that clot to break down. You could also have someone who goes home, and this happens a lot, they go home and they rinse and rinse and rinse and they poke in there, and even though you told them, don't do that, they present to you a few days later in pain and they tell you, I did everything I should have. I went home and I rinsed right away with salt water and I brushed really good back there, and you know they tell you everything that you told them not to do, but maybe they didn't really retain it when you told them. Straws are something that have been implicated in causing dry sockets due to the suction from the straw pulling the, so the uh, clot out of the socket. Now, this is kind of a uh, myth because when you swallow, you're actually generating just as much force or more than you would be with a straw. So this is probably not a valid thing. You could still tell your patients to avoid them just to be safe, but if you are doing it, it may not be necessary. There's also a theory out there about too much force being applied to a tooth to remove it, which then traumatizes the bone around the tooth socket, and that leads to the destruction of the clot and the release of kinins, which cause pain. Now, I could say anecdotally, this seems to be the case for me. When I've had extractions where I get the tooth out, nothing breaks, nothing's difficult about it, other than I have to apply more force than I normally would on the forcep or in the elevator to get that tooth out, those patients can come back with more pain than normal and oftentimes have developed a dry socket.